Hey everyone, today we're going to be testing what happens if you don't let water expand when it freezes. If you remember, when water turns from a liquid to a solid, it expands by about 10% volume. But the question is, what if you have a container that doesn't expand at all? Will the water just stay a liquid or can it still turn into a solid if you don't let it expand? I've gotten this question a lot about what happens if you don't let liquid water expand when it freezes. And I noticed there was a channel on YouTube that tried this already using steel blocks, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. I wanted to try something that was more structurally sound. A steel block can bow pretty easily in the center, so I wanted to try something that doesn't have a way to bow easily. And so what I chose was a cylinder. What I'm going to be doing is filling the steel container completely full with water, and then capping off the top with another steel cap, and then completely freezing it solid and seeing if it actually breaks the steel or it's able to contain it inside. Okay, now I'm gonna completely fill this with water. So I'll screw it on under the water so we don't get any air gaps in there. Okay, there we go. Before we do the experiment, I wanna take a moment to introduce my shorts channel. This is a channel where I'm gonna be doing daily videos that show just a short snippet, less than one minute, of my best science experiments. It's actually been pretty cool making the shorts videos because I have to summarize the most important points and put it in less than a minute. So it makes me think about the best way to explain it in the shortest amount of time. I'll put a link to that channel in the description as well and you can go subscribe if you want quick daily snippets of science. Okay, this is very close to freezing right now. We've got it at around six degrees, 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, now let's pour in the liquid nitrogen. Before I do this experiment, let me explain a little bit about the safety behind it. What I'm not doing is filling this with liquid nitrogen. I want to be clear, I am not filling this container with liquid nitrogen. That would be extremely dangerous. What I am doing is filling this with water, completely enclosed and then putting it in liquid nitrogen just to freeze the water quickly. And so as the container freezes, it's going to bow out a little bit. The cylinder is going to change shape a little bit and bow. So if it finally does fail, there's not going to be a lot of movement. It's going to be just a little bit of movement of metal that can push the liquid out. And so when you compress a liquid or a solid, when the container that it's in finally does fail, it's typically not a big explosion or anything. This is not the same when you try to contain the pressure of a gas, because if you contain the pressure of a gas, when the container that it's in finally does fail, what it does is continue to expand quickly, and that expansion can throw out pieces of shrapnel everywhere. So it's very dangerous to fill things with compressed gases. But needless to say, don't try this at home. There still is going to be some energy contained in that container if it finally does fail, and you don't wanna be near it if it fails and explodes a little bit. I'm going to be behind my blast shield during this. Let's try it out. Okay, it's below freezing right now. No way. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> okay, look at this. So it wasn't even frozen all the way inside. You can see the outer edge is coated with ice and then it just popped off the top here. So the liquid water shot out of it. 
And then once it hit the liquid nitrogen, that's where the big explosion came from because it just vaporized the liquid nitrogen. If you remember from a previous video that I did, steel does get slightly more brittle when it's at liquid nitrogen temperatures, but this steel wasn't as cold as liquid nitrogen. The last measured temperature I had was at around negative 10 degrees Celsius, so it wasn't extremely cold. So this really was able to pop off a fourth an inch thick steel off the end of it, just from freezing the water. This piece broke in two and broke off the end here. Now most likely in any experiment you can come up with if you're trying to stop water from freezing, one of two things are gonna happen. Either your container's going to break or it's going to bend enough and expand enough so that it gets the expansion it needs so it doesn't have to break the container. So if you look at the phase diagram of water at zero degrees Celsius, you can see that if you're able to contain the pressure, meaning that your volume's not gonna change at all but you're just gonna build up pressure, at zero degrees Celsius you can just move straight up this line you can see that you can keep it a liquid for a while. In fact, even if it's below zero degrees Celsius, you can keep it a liquid up until 620 megapascals. Now that's an extremely high pressure. That's around 6,000 atmospheres of pressure. So most likely any device that you can come up with, it isn't going to contain 6,000 atmospheres of pressure. But let's say you had some magical container that could contain the water past 620 megapascals. Well, at that point, the water would still turn to solid. You can see in the blue portion of the phase diagram, that's when water is a solid. And you can see that there's actually many different types of ice. And these different types of ice take up different volumes. For example, if you can get up to this ice 9 or ice 12 phase, then the ice is actually denser than water. So ICE 9 has a density of 1.16 gram per centimeter cubed. And ICE 12 has a density of 1.3 grams per centimeter cubed. So that's 1.3 times more dense than regular water. So that means that it actually takes up less volume than water. So the final answer is if you contain liquid water and continue freezing it, you can stop it from becoming solid ice. But eventually, if you keep doing it, it will become solid ice that's in a different phase than regular ice. And it will be a phase that takes up less volume than regular ice. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And also don't forget to subscribe to my shorts channel where I do small little snippets of all the experiments that I've done on my channel. And you get a less than one minute version of it. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.